councillors. That wasn't the case, was it, um, in the urgent care scrutiny committee? When, this isn't urgent care. No, the, it's urgent care. Mother, the, 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 it may be mentioned excuse anything, me, the, we're not talking about that now, councillors. But there was a statement made about hearing and listening to councillors. And the only example I've seen of the CCG hearing and listening to councillors is walking, is, is carrying on with their consultation despite the councillors asking um, for that so consultation to be to be looked to at again regarding. Um, Councillor Norbury, do you have a question in relation to this? Yeah, my question is, what what can you what do you mean by hearing and listening um, to the to the councillors? Because the only example I've seen that is at this last scrutiny committee. Uh, meeting when, when you decide to carry on with the consultation regardless of the recommendations made by the scrutiny committee once we've heard all the evidence. Um, before, you, you, um, before you come in, Dr Wells, if I may, um, I'm supposed to read one of the questions I was quite um, thought right there is that um, the CCG and our health partners do regularly attend um, our um, overview and scrutiny committees um, you know for various different reasons um, so uh, so I, I just want to, to put it on the record that you know you, are, you do come to scrutiny and you are scrutinized um, and if we can now uh, if you can answer the question so well, they didn't tell us about closing the um, uh, so we're not talking about urgent care right now uh, so within the um, Joint Strategic Commissioning Board that, um, that is a public meeting, uh, well I mean sorry, meeting in public, um, we have uh, items that are discussed mutually and absolutely um, I, I feel that the councillors feel that their view is considered and um, is, is part of the decision making and we come to a decision together. Um, Chair, do you wish me to answer the comment about the urgent care or not? Um, I don't think it's relevant to this, thank you. Um, Councillor Kruger. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, hi. Uh, um, yeah, I just wanted to ask a, 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 a quick question, really, and it's about part and parcel of this agreement, and it states that the antitrust and the CCG can overspend on the rules as long as it's reasonable. So the first question is, who, who decides whether it's reasonable? And then the second part of the reasonable question is, on, on page 5.6, uh, sorry, page 17, 5.6, it's got, um, given in, 19, in 2020 and 19-20, virtually all the NHS World CCG expenditure is intended to be pooled. Therefore, a more sophisticated risk share arrangement will need to be developed and agreed, based upon the level of risk brought forward to the annual agreement. So, I, I'm confused because any arrangements I've ever made have always been robust and have agreements in place prior to. So this is basically saying, if you can agree with me, that we'll do it now on this basis and then next year we'll see what we're going to do, whatever happens. So, um, as uh, Graham alluded to, this has taken some time to yeah. come forward and there was a view that it would be um, uh, our aim at one point to, to pull, pull pretty much all the uh, CCG budget and uh, uh, some health, uh, some care, social care budget. Um, we have, have uh, having had discussions within the Joint Strategic Commission Board, feel that things need to be taken more slowly um, so that we can, we can do things in a, in a measured fashion and the, uh, the, this year it was just a small amount and a shadow, smaller amount and a shadow for for the uh, greater amount, and there is no view at the moment to 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 move now to pooling the whole the whole lot. It it will take a period of time to allow the scrutiny of decisions made and to move forward in a measured fashion. If that's the case. Um I'm still confused about how you would manage to get rid of your 19 million deficits if all your funding is then approved. Right. Being used somewhere else. Um, we need to look at the system deficit. Yeah. The whole system is 60 million. Now, uh, for much of our providers, where they obtain their money is is 
five or six CG funds, which, as I say, is, is, is given to us by Parliament. Um, the person who is accountable to the Secretary of State for it is, is the accountable officer, Simon Banks. Um, and we need to, to look at the work we're doing across Healthy Wirral, um, which as I said is, is underneath the, uh, the Wirral plan. And um, what we're working towards is a system sustainability plan for the system, for the whole world, including our providers. Now, um, we are doing work to try and, and uh, at the same time, so trying to improve things for residents, um, nevertheless, use our resources more effectively. Um, so yes, we are trying to, to narrow that, uh, that gap. Um, and uh, we are not projecting a 19 million deficit, that has never been the case. Um, but we are working, as we do each year, to, to use it more effectively. <coughs> but as Graham said, that is not part of the shared fund. No, well, I, 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 would, I don't wish to speak for the council councillors, but um, I suspect you don't want it to be until we've moved to system sustainability. But that's a system issue. Councillor Gilchrist, and then I'll go to Sumo. Thank you. Perhaps uh, Dr. Wells can help dispel some of my misconceptions or whatever. Um, I declared an interest as a member of the Health and Wellbeing Board, and I totted up that since the April 2015 up to this November, there have been 30 meetings, of which I only missed one. So I have a perspective on the system that other members might not have. So, I have to go back to basics to make sure that I got it right in my mind. I watched, Future, the video, or whatever it's called, the webcast of the recent joint meeting, and to an outsider, you can see that all work has been done before the meeting by discussion, negotiation, whatever processes, because at the meeting, uh, yourself as the co-chair, Councillor Jones, the co-chair, asked each other's members present, is that all right with you? And uh, everyone said, that's all right with them. I think what might trouble elected members is the composition. And so if I go through the names, uh, from Wirral's side, we've got cabinet men for social care, cabinet men for children and families, cabinet men for highways and transport, advised by the Director of Health and Wellbeing, Director of Children's Services, Director of Health and Care. From the CCG portion of the committee, the document I have lists all voting members of all the executive directors, Chief Officer, Chief Finance Officer, Director of Corporate Affairs, Director of Quality and Patient Safety, Director of Commissioning, Clinical Representatives, Chair of the Governing Body, Medical Director, and three lay representatives. For clarification, um, the vote that you cast, is that on behalf of all those people that I've listed? Yes, so it's important to um, be aware that the Joint Committee is, is a committee in common. It's two statutory committees sitting side by side discussing um, areas of mutual importance. Um, as was alluded to earlier, we don't really want to have to take um, decisions back that, uh, that the council members have been able to uh, give their decision on. We don't want to have to take them back to a meeting the following week um, for ratification of governing body. It therefore was felt important to have governing body present. But uh, it's important that uh, we recognise that this, this committee has two votes. So we discuss an item uh, together, listening to everybody's views uh, around the table, and, uh, and then uh, Councillor James, as the Chair of the Council Committee, asks the Council Members uh, to give their vote. And I, as Chair, or somebody else if I'm not present, a Chair of the Governing Body, ask the Governing Body Members to take a vote. So, so there's one vote from each week from each side. Now, it, yes, yes, there have been discussions about the fact that there are more people on the Governing Body than there are on the Council. If we made those equal numbers, 
then um, if, we, if, if we drop to three or a small number, then governing body is not quorum and cannot make a decision at the time. So it was felt for quorum reasons, the best thing was to, to, to bring this together. And, and as of next April, the dates are absolutely equal. And in the meantime, we're making sure that there are quorum numbers present for governing body. Um, it, it's up to the council how many um, council members they wish there. That was uh, the decision of the council was, was that those three members would, would um, represent the council. Um, that obviously is not, uh, not something that the CCG can make a decision about. We have a constitution which, which gives our governing body and to be poor it, we, we wish it. Otherwise, as, as Councillor Mosprat suggested, decisions have to go back for ratification, which didn't feel like the best process. Can I follow up? Well, just, just just Perhaps it was best to turn to page 74 and page 80 in the documents we have, using 74 and 80 as the large type print at the bottom. Uh, on page 74, there is the last sentence on 74, talks about the JSCB Cabinet Committee is authorised to give whatever agreements are necessary to proposals of the CCG in pursuance of the objectives of integration and improvement of health and care service delivery. That refers to the proposals of the CCG. Is there anything uh, you want to say about that? Um, we're happy to discuss um, any of our proposals with the um, council, members, uh, council members there. The CCG has some statutory responsibilities, but the council has statutory responsibilities. Um, but I think more open we can be about uh, proposals with council members. It, it allows uh, elected members um, from a democratic process to, to have input to what we're discussing. Um, can I then turn to page 80? Uh, do you, sorry, you don't have it in front of you. Yes, thank you. I'll read it because Dr. Wells hasn't got it. On page 80, these principles are to be reviewed by the CCG governing body and the leader of the council or the council cabinet, as may be determined by the leader of the council, six months after initial adoption and then annually thereafter. These principles may be refreshed by agreement between the CCG and the council at any time, including on any such review. So can our officers help us know when the six months after initial adoption starts, and what triggers that review, and what would be the annual review date? Thank you. So I think it's really important with a new process that, that we do review what we're doing. Is it the right thing for the residents of Wirral? Is it, is it helping? Is it being done in the right way? Um, in terms of the, uh, the uh, Section 75 Accord Agreement, as you as you'll obviously be aware, if you've got it in front of you, that was October. Um, and uh, so I, I'm presuming that that as a decision needs reviewing um, six months after that, and our entire arrangements need reviewing annually. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Um, thank you, again, Dr. Wells. I'm now going to um, bring to a close or, or, or bring, um, bring forward the summary. And the first um, person is Kate Cannon. If you'd like to come forward, please, and uh, summarise. Thank you again, everybody, for, for all their input this evening. It's been, it's been, it's been very interesting. Um, I do still feel that, that the evidence that we've either heard or, or been given answers about was only supported um, our initial concerns. Um, I think one of our major concerns is the overall loss of democratic control. Um, this is important in any area of the council, but especially in social care due to the statutory responsibilities. And I think this is one of the concerns in the minutiae of that contract itself. And as it currently exists, 
we feel, and, and obviously the key point documents I've given you, I really do feel that that puts the power of control in the hands of the CCG. And I do urge the committee to review a further negotiation of that contract and that it shouldn't go ahead in its present form. You know, I appreciate that we do need the Section 75 agreement, but what I'm saying in the current form, I do feel, as a council, we are giving up a lot of that democratic control to the CCG. I feel the council needs to take a far more robust, robust action to protect itself from very, from very significant risks in respect of its statutory duties, as we've talked and we've heard about in, in depth from everybody. And just to reiterate that nobody is against partnership working, I mean, we really aren't. Um, but ultimately, it, it doesn't need to happen like this. More steps can be taken really to protect the council and to protect the public. Um, I don't feel individual members have had the opportunity to consider and discuss the implications of this decision, and I would urge the committee to refer this back to full council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Councillor Jones, can I ask you please to step forward and to rise? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll try not to long because I know that you've, uh, you've got a busy night ahead of you. Healthy Rivers, from the, the basis really, I think, of collaborative working that's been going on in the middle for, for a number of years, really. Um, I think the the Section 75 gives us increased democratic control, definitely not less. Um, I think that Dr Wells clarified the, the voting that the three councillors are equal to however many on the governing body. Um, and I would suggest that this move to integration is actually in the best public interest. Um, definitely more democratic accountability. We've got robust safeguarding measures in place. Um, the 19 million is not included in the section 75 and because of the risk we definitely didn't want to include that um, and there isn't any appetite for you know the way people feel to, to put anything else into the package at, at present um, I think we need to see that this works properly um, joined up care works better when coming out of one organization rather than two or three different organizations one set of rules, one set of policies and procedures to follow. Um, and this has definitely not got anything to do with privatisation or ACOs. It's more about collaborative working. And if we don't do it, the implications for the health system in Willow are serious. So I would really ask the committee to think carefully, please, and consider the evidence that they've been given. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor James. Now I'm going to move into an open debate. Um, I'm more than happy um, if those of you who come as witnesses, um, please, feel, please feel free to stay if you wish to. Equally, if you need to go, then um, that's also fine. Thank you. you. You actually won't take part in the debate. Thank you. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think that what we've heard tonight is that this agreement is important to the health and well-being of people in the world who we represent and uh, at an appropriate time for yourself I'd be looking to move that we agree that this decision is the right one.
still concerned that um, there is these opposing views on what happens if we review it, because I'm very clear that Graham did say to us in the meeting that in the short term there wouldn't be problems, and all, all I'm asking for is that we review and reconsider this contract. I'll pass over Thank you, Councillor Mosbrat. Does anybody else want to come in? That's a motion, I'll second it, sir. Well, I'll take Councillor Gilchrist first. Okay. First thing is, I just want some clarification. There was a discussion about what was actually the purpose of the call in. So I read, read the introduction on page three. Uh, we wish to call in the Joint Strategic Board decision to approve to <coughs> sign the contract. Uh, so the first thing I want to clarification on is whether we're debating the signing of the contract. And the, the issue is to me, and it's partly our own fault and partly our own system, so I'm going to hold my hand up and say, could have done more as an early stage. I remember Councillor Lewis and I were present at a meeting and held on one being more. And we had a discussion about the publication of the Christ Waterhouse document. And this would be going back about six or eight months without looking it up. And so it was decided that the best way might be to have a redacted version at that time. Just wait for the chair to finish taking advice. Sorry. We never got the redacted version, so that as Councillor Norris said, the first time members really got there. The hands of it here was when it was published here. But I declare that as a member of the Health Men Meeting Board, I had read the documentation as an early stage. See, the second problem we have is really going back to last May because there was an executive member decision taken which set up the JSCB uh, and put the three cabinet members on it, it appointed deputies, and it was dated the 22nd and 25th of May, signed by Councillor McCourt, it's Mr McCourt, sorry, Bill McCourt, on the 22nd, and Councillor Davis on the 25th of May, and then published. So our second problem is that none of us looked at that, called it in, and said, what's all this about? Should we have a great look at it? So it's in our fault that, because of all the other things we do, apart from the living, um, we, we, now it is, whatever the date is now, November, before we, we really look at it in depth. When uh, Councillor Cannon circulated her uh, documentation uh, about the issues that troubled her, uh, I, in the adjournment, looked at all the ones, and funny enough, a lot of the things that Councillor Cannon had marked and circled or highlighted are things I'd scrawled all over and underlined or written. So, it seems to me there's a problem of processing where we've got to where we are and the process that's needed to go forward. Um, in questioning Dr. Wells about what do the particular paragraphs I quoted mean and taking account of what members have said about um, well, we're in 2018 19 and we're looking at 2018 19 halfway through and works in progress, the people are being cared for, and so on. So we're in a strange position. None of us, I think, want to undo any of it, you know, because if we go back three or four years when John Devlin was running Healthy Bill, I had this picture of Mrs. Smith or Mrs. Jones or somebody in the middle of a thing with lots of circles around her and dark and as far as pointing here and everywhere, saying that Mrs. Smith or Mrs. Jones is the centre of our attention and we have to cure all problems. It means she has to tell her story on two times, doesn't know who's caring, who's going to come and care and so on. So all works designed to sort that out. The question is for us, who's keeping an eye on the funds? Now, in listening to discussions, I have scribbled something of my own now. It doesn't involve sending the whole thing. I think sometimes want to send the whole thing back to council or cabinet. But I would suggest the following word, and then members can listen to it, and I'll pass it to the chair and members can tear it apart. But I've written, in view of the substantial funds being pooled and managed by the new organisation, further channels of communication need to be developed with the Adult Care and Health Overview Group Committee so that members might have greater insight and more, uh, more meaningful contributions 
make more meaningful contributions to the oversight of that body. Similar parallel arrangements be made for the Children's Committee. In addition, work on the preparation of a system sustainability plan shall be placed before members at the earliest opportunity. So that's my conclusion from this evening. I've thrown into the system sustainability plan because it's definitely mentioned in the detail of the memorandum of understanding that went to the board on the 16th of October. I think we have to have our sights not only on what's in hand, but what might happen in the future. I don't know whether I've got a second of what I've suggested, but I've got a three member list of the So I, I, that's my formulation. I listened to the members, did they take Councillor Clement's formulation, Councillor Musbats, and anyone else's to see if we can make progress. Thank you, Councillor Gay Did you want to? Yeah. Um, so, 
my, my concern is that dealing with this in the most democratic way we possibly can, and that can only be by going back um, to full council and supporting what um, council tribute said. Councillor Cannon, I believe you're coming in with your children's cross on. Sorry, thank, thank you, Julie, I appreciate that. It was just to say that in my opening statement, I did ask if it was possible for the chair to refer that budgetary element back to the Children's Committee. It was just a simple reminder. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, to just return to my initial point, this is a very important matter, not just around um, the governments, which is really important to get it right. But we don't want to mess up the care for people who could be stuck in hospital, left without care packages and so on. We've got to be really careful what we do. We're very responsible in what we do, which is why I would move that we don't do things which will delay the implementation and the continuing work that's going on. Can I bring my word on future exam, Chair? Because you did mention that earlier, that anyone who has any word might wish to pass it to you. So what I'm going to suggest actually, because uh, Councillor Mosprat and yourself is not that dissimilar, um, I wonder whether we take a five minutes break and we actually have a look at whether we could bring that together, whether that might be more sensible. Okay, thank you. Did, did you want to go to the library for that or be happy to do that here? as it happens, I wouldn't be averse to adding Phil's words to my motion either. So perhaps we could do all sorts of interesting things.